what's up y'all i'm going to show you this quick video on this um infinity q50 2015 it's a sedan it's a nice one i don't know if you could appreciate the color on it in the video but it's like a brown color sedan looks nice anyways we're doing the spark plugs i already finished this side um so i'll just give you a, a brief explanation on this side real quick you want to disconnect this clamp right here disconnect right there disconnect right here disconnect this plug and back here this plug right here disconnect that plug disconnect this plug loosen there loosen there and take this intake boot out loosen that clamp be careful pulling it out not to damage the hose underneath pull this out then you want to loosen all four of those screws on the throttle body pull the throttle body out to the side and you'll have access to your three uh spark plugs you'll need um an allen socket a five millimeter allen to get to the bolts on the throttle body you'll need an eight millimeter for the intake clamps and a 10 millimeter for everything else you'll need pliers for the for the clamps here and this is the denso spark plugs that that it normally comes with from the factory there are 916 but we're using a 14 millimeter socket which will also work um we did a k n oil filter they come with the oil change sticker inside um the part number on that was hp 1008 uh we went ahead and did some ams oil synthetic oil 5w30 with that um and we are upgrading from your denso spark plugs to your ngk laser iridium spark plug and um the part number on those is 90174 so there'll be six of them obviously i've already replaced three here so now i'm just gonna do a video showing you guys how to replace the other um showing you guys how to replace these other spark plugs over here um on this side so like i don't know if you can see on the camera there make sure that you got a good camera angle yeah you do so i already have this plug pulled over here i already have this plug pulled over here i already loosened both of these clamps the next thing to do is to loosen this 10 millimeter bolt right there you won't have that 10 millimeter bolt on the other side, but you will have it on this side. So you wanna, you wanna, on this side, you'll have to remove that bolt, set it off to the side over there. And then that loosens that right there. Next, you want to, um, You wanna try to remove this throttle body from the intake tube from the throttle body. So there you have that out of the way, right? And um, you have a clamp that's buried down under here, but before I try to get to it there, I'm gonna remove it from right here. So go ahead and remove this from right there. Pull that out of the way get a gentle bite on it make sure it spins and then pull that off of there i'm trying to keep the hose from breaking, holding it underneath. I'm 
when I'm working with an injured thumb. Okay, it came off on the bottom. It just slid right off on the bottom, but you wanna be careful with these hoses to make sure they don't break there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish removing it here just so I don't have to worry about damaging it when I put it back on. Okay, so that's off there. And then we're gonna do the throttle body. I got my boy Red over here. He's in that truck behind this car. And it seems that while I'm recording this video, doing this, trying to show y'all how to get these spark plugs on this Infinity, that his radiator busted a hose or something. So I'll just finish up this video and then I'll go give him a hand. So we got four bolts on the throttle body, y'all. And what I do is just crack them loose. They're five millimeter Allen bolts. And I always like to crack them loose first to make sure that they're gonna come off, right? And then I'll remove my ratchet and I'll get the rest by hand. And I always like to disconnect the bottom ones first and pull those all the way out before I remove the top ones. Hey, what's up, Elliot? I'm almost done over here. Cool. So as I'm recording a YouTube video on how to do these, my buddy Elliot, the owner of the vehicle, shows up. So now we only got all of YouTube watching, but we got the owner watching too. <laughs> Well, these are so little, right? Yeah, those are, I was telling them in YouTube world over here, those are Denso spark plugs. They're 9 16 so your normal spark plug is a, is a 5 8 And um, you want to be real sensitive with pulling them out because they can break easily. They're tiny little spark plugs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't, and I don't have, I don't have any sunglasses, I mean, reading glasses to see that, but yeah. You want to keep these? Nah, I, I'll away? toss them, yeah. I, so we'll put them in the box and throw them away? Yeah. Right. Okay, so we remove this throttle body out of the way. If you can pull the new ones out for me, I'm about to be ready for them. I don't know if y'all can see on the camera there, but when, you don't want to detach these hoses. You just want to lean it out of the way to have access to the new spark plugs. These are the NGK Iridiums that we're going to be installing next. Let me make sure y'all can still see what I'm doing here. Yeah, so next we're going to loosen the coils. PCV valves right here these this hose goes to the PCV valve and this hose goes to the PCV valve right there PCV valve is positive crank ventilation valve and if you feel these hoses and you try to squeeze them see how hard they are Elliot mm -hmm. they're like super hard mm -hmm. so a hose is supposed to be this one's still a little hard it's supposed to have that flexibility mm -hmm. and these are like hardened like plastic that's how you know you need a new PCV valve because the hoses are usually cooked and hot and if you're not careful they crack real easy so that spark plug is the one we're got to be a little scared of because it's close to that PCV valve gotcha this plug we're gonna disconnect so these look like they're new yeah somebody recently Put an air filter they on. They probably just did it at the, uh, at the Infinity. Yeah, so there's one coil. I like to pull the screws out so you can lift it up and have access to the pigtail. Ah, and I'm working with a bad thumb. You really don't know how much you use your thumb until you can't use it. But we'll work our way around it. 
so different. This is so different to do with these. Yeah, got that guy. All right. So this PCV valve, I don't know if y'all can see on the camera where my hands are. This PCV valve, I don't want to bend too much because it'll break easily. It's hardened, so you just want to be as gentle as possible and slide that coil out. That's the one you got to be a little afraid of if you're going to be afraid of any of them. And then you're going to, again, put the spark plug tool down in the hole and be very delicate with that hose. In a perfect world, you would replace the PCV valve and get the hoses for it. But we're not doing that tonight. So we're just going to work our way around it as careful as possible. And we're going to do the rest by hand. As much as you can do by hand, because the thread on these spark plugs is real skinny thread and it's sensitive and it can break easy. Also, you want to, I try to use the ratchet as little as possible because I don't want to hurt the threads in any way. So my hands can't hurt them. If I'm here with the ratchet, dandole, oh, oh, you can easily damage the threads inside of the engine. And so it takes a little longer, but in the end, you know, it's less liability on you. And so this one is the hardest one because it's this PCV valve is so close to it. So I'm going for it first. I'm going to pull this out with the magnet, and there that is if you want to grab that, Elliot. And then here's the new one that's going in. And if, if let's show on camera the comparison of the two. Uh, sorry, I'm knocking this thing. All right, so there's, uh, there's your Iridium, and there's the Denso. So that's, a, that's also the same cost as this plug. But guys, uh, NGK just makes a little better quality than Denso, so to each their own. But if you want to have the better one in there, you're going to spend the money on the NGK. So we'll screw this back in gently. If we can get past this spark plug without damaging this PCV hose, we know we're good to go from then on out. And you notice how I'm putting it all in by hand, spinning it all the way down. It's long threads, so you're going to be spinning and spinning and spinning because it's, it's long, long threads on that. So that'll go down. Now you want to be sensitive to how much you tighten too. You got to feel for it. You, you don't want to kill it. Just snug it down. That's it. And that one's done right there. So next we'll move on to this next spark plug. Now that we're kind of out of hot water with that first one. And crack these two over here. And you see what I mean by threading them out by hand? You want to be as nice as possible to the threads on these. Because um, it's an aluminum head, y'all. And this finger's keeping this straight with the hole. And this coarse area on the extension, I use it to spin it up as straight as possible. And I want it to come out nice and soft. I don't want to feel anything rough. And I'm pulling that out. Then I use, so that one needs to spin a little more. So does that one. The magnet won't pull it up quite yet. There it goes. You just needed a couple more turns. There's the other Denzo. And there's the other Denzo. And the new NGKs are right here. So when you drop them in, you don't just want to drop them in either because you could bend the tip. 
on this ground electrode and that igniter. So you wanna set them in there nice. So I'll set it in nice and slow without dropping it in. And I feel that it's on there with the tip of my finger. It's a feel thing, it's not a really see thing. You don't wanna gap these because the iridium igniter is very sensitive. The gap is usually already set on these. Set that in nice and gentle like that. Don't let it drop in hard because you don't want to damage the tip. Then once it's in there, again, I use my finger as a guide and I thread them down. Now, you want to thread them all the way down by hand because, see, like, the customer's here and I know Elliot for years and he knows I'm careful with this stuff, but with other people... It's especially important to do this because it covers your butt, man. And then if the customer were to come and say, well, that guy damaged my motor when he shoved them spark plugs in there. You know, the video doesn't lie. The video shows that you're being careful putting things in and that it's spinning by hand. So if the threads were off on this, I wouldn't be able to spin this so freely, but it's going in nice and gentle by hand, meaning that the threads are going in level and straight. So once I feel I can't go by hand no more, it's because we're getting close to the bottom. And guys, these have a crush washer right here. You see that crush washer? So you don't want to uh, smash it. You just want to crush it a little bit. You, you don't need to overkill it is what I'm saying. Be nice. It's an aluminum head. So I'm going to feel. It's a feel thing. So right there, I feel like it's crushing the washer right there. And that's it, and I back off. I'm not trying to be Mighty Mouse on this and show it just how strong I am. All I wanna do is feel that I crush the washer. So I felt that right there and we're done. Next thing is drop the coils in. I took this coil out of this cylinder, this one out of that cylinder, this one out of that. I like to put them back exactly where I took them out of. So we'll go with the hard one first, which is the the PCV valve, the one closest to the PCV valve, and we'll put this one in the hole. Be very careful with this PCV valve. You just gotta, you can't be afraid of it, but you wanna be nice to it. And just squeeze it right down in the hole. These go in nice and easy. There's no interference on these, just center them in. My advice to you if you're putting these in at home is put your pigtail in first before you set it all the way down. So I'll bring it in and I'll put the pigtail like that and then I'll set it all the way down. Next is the three little screws. And they're 10 millimeter screws and just tighten these down and then we just put his throttle body on and start this thing up. And He's ready to go home with new spark plugs. Guys, these aren't cheap spark plugs. $20 a pop. What what was it, Elliot? Like $140 for all six? $140, yes. $140 bucks for spark plugs, but. So $140 with. But um, let me tell y'all, you don't want to put anything other than a Denso or an NGK in here. You will regret it. The car won't run right. $23 each one. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, and I mean, this is pretty much a uh, 100,000 mile plug. You know, they'll tell you, to, the dealership will tell you to replace it sooner, but I'm telling you it's a it's a 100,000 mile plug. You get what you pay for, so if you put cheap stuff in it, you're going to feel it the way the engine runs. There it goes. If you're gonna use impact guns, guys, be gentle. You don't want, this is a plastic. This is plastic coming down. You don't wanna, ah, you don't wanna kill this thing. I just use it to scoot it down a little bit. I don't use it to butcher it. I have a little adapter right here. I snug it, I give it the last little torque by hand, not with the gun just like that it's plastic it doesn't need to be overkilled and this one right here yeah. 
What happened, Red? My fan going so long. Why is that making noises? This screw is going in not straight. So if yours is making noises, back out. Don't keep going with it and inspect what's happening. I'm gonna pull this harness just up out of the way a little bit enough to see what's happening in here. I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna look down in my hole. My threads look good here. Threads look good there. Center it and drop it back in. And bolts are uh, real important to get centered in properly so you don't cross thread them, y'all. Should be able to put them in by hand. Nice and smooth. This PCD valve is what makes me nervous over here. Let me see, this one's starting to make noises again. What you think the noise is? Uh, it's not going in happy. It's squealing because it's going in a little sloppy a little sideways uh, so what I'm gonna do is move the move the coil completely out of the way and thread it in without the coil just the bolt and see if it goes in straight Let's see if that makes a difference. Kind of clean the thread a little on it. Where I can watch it going down. Yeah, something. It's going to go in crooked. Alright guys, this one's not going to play nice. So we're going to have to get a little more creative with it It's this PCV valve here. So you come look down here. Uh -huh. This is the bolt that we're trying to get. You see it? Uh -huh. But um, this PCV valve is está bien dura. It's like super hard, and I can't. Normally, you would remove it uh -huh. to get to that bolt, but I I know it's gonna crack if I remove it, so I'm avoiding that. I'm trying to get the bolt in straight. How's your papa doing? He's doing good. This is the problem with plastic. You gotta be very sensitive with it because I can barely get a finger in there. I'm gonna send you a link for PCV valves. Same thing as before.
It doesn't get tight, right? It's getting tight. I just don't like how it's uh, squealing so much getting there. Mm -hmm. Did you see? Did you see it? Take it out. Oh, the screw is 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 good. It's, it's good? the um, it's the thread in the in the valve cover. Okay. Yeah, it's the thread in the actual. Look inside here. Mm -hmm. It's the thread in there. Mm -hmm. okay. That is not liking the screw. It's like whoever did it last time kind of forced it a little because it's... Maybe, yeah. It probably won't get too tight then, here. Eh? No, it'll, it'll get tight. I just, um... We're going to put a little grease on it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, a little bit of oil. Uh, that should help it go down, but that's still, still want to be careful. I like, I, like those, I like those plastic gloves. Did you see the fight yesterday? Yeah, with uh, Tyson. I know, so silly, man. Mike Tyson beat the heck out of Ray Johnson. How did they call that fight a draw? They said it was a draw, but he beat the heck out of him. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was a draw, but it happened a couple months ago. It's the way they wire those fans, probably. probably yeah. Everybody that watched that fight with me over where we were watching it mm -hmm. said Tyson won it. Tyson was going for all kind of body shots. Yeah. Well, and, and it's a funny. Roy Jones was really tired. He was breathing really heavy. Yeah. And uh, he was and, fighting scared. And yeah, yeah, he was scared. He was scared to get knocked out. He's scared. He's scared. He's scared. Yeah. Oh, no, screw fell. Let's see if we can fish it out. Magnet guys are your friend. Yep. Right. They save you. A little bit of grease, put it in center, put it in by hand, and then gently get it down in there. Not making noise now. That grease is helping, but. And there we go. We're all the way down. There you go. Okay. You guys, when you're working on these things and you run into stuff like that, patience is a virtue. You don't want to just, ah, man, screw it. Just hit it harder. Ah, ah. Because then you end up in a situation you don't want to be in with broken stuff. That you have to pay for out of your pocket. So on this throttle body, before we put it in, we want to clean. I don't know if y'all can see on the camera, but you want to clean the backside. See that oil? Mm -hmm. That oil is telling you you need that PCV valve. It's called positive crank ventilation valve. So all the positive crankcase pressure in here, that valve is supposed to ventilate it. So this is um, electronically controlled. So you don't want to mess with the butterfly because then you have to do the relearning procedure on the accelerator, but you can wipe that down real nice without opening or closing the butterfly. I know it's gonna be tempting to open the butterfly, but don't do it because you'll have a rough idle and then you'll be into a whole new adventure trying to do the relearning procedure. So you just wanna wipe down the backside, wipe it all the way around. And then I always look inside of the intake here for how much oil I have in there 
this one's not that bad but it's just there's a little in there you want to inspect the gasket make sure that it's on and good all the way around and then you can bolt this back up when you go to bolt this back up you do the two top ones first snug them in by hand because this is going in the plastic The name of the game is be nice because you're dealing with a lot of aluminum on plastic. And guys want to come and do everything with the guns <laughs> to do it fast, but then they end up in a situation where something cracked or something broke. And now they have to order the part and the customer can't leave. So it takes a little more time to do it by hand, but you're always safer that way. Less liability. Snug that up. And you want to go in an X pattern. So crisscross, not just in a circle. That way it settles in even on the gasket. And so I went bottom right, I'll go top left. And then I'll end up coming down here and finishing up top. tight just snuggy snug and then we go crisscross to the top snuggy snug just like that you don't want to kill it it's plastic so be nice and you hear that little creak noise that's the plastic talking to you saying hey chill out take it easy We'll plug that back in there. And then next is the throttle body. But before we put that on, remember, we have this bottom one that slides on. And the pliers are right here. He's going to be getting a new performance AM intake soon. So we'll eliminate a lot of this, but until then we want to be careful. When you install this uh, intake boot, it has a slit right there, and it has an arrow up here pointing, see it? So make sure those line up with that, and the slit in this one will line up with that. That's how you know you got it centered in the right position. And this hose you want to bring in.
pocket right here and that'll tighten up your throttle body. Wanna be nice to those clamps also. We're gonna double check that plug, that plug, everything clamped here, underneath down there. We put that wire back. We plugged our coil, bolted all that in. It's like everything in such a confined space, you gotta take all parts to work on. Yep, that's these new modern cars. Now guys, I'm gonna say this to the YouTube world here. This has no mechanical purpose at all, but people like it, it looks nice. You know, pop the hood, it's pretty. But um, yeah, it has no mechanical purpose, so it's up to you if you wanna put it back on or not. Some people just rather have it on than off. Me, I like riding without it because you let the engine breathe a little more air through there. Japanese cars. I think Infinities have this because they're basically a luxury Nissan. I don't yeah, know. that's I don't know. pretty I don't, much. I don't know if Nissan has them, but I know Infinity. Well, these days they're putting them on even Kias. Hey, but yeah, the luxury cars are the ones that started doing it, oh. and now all the cars are jumping on board. Yeah, the first Infinity that I had was a 2006, and it had it had one also. It had a G a G35. That's the first one that I had. All right, so there's those. I would have ran that truck a little bit longer, Red, to burp any air bubbles in it out. So, last but not least, we switch to our 10 millimeter. We're gonna tighten down the center of the cover first so that it brings it down. That's it, don't go too crazy. And then we crisscross the other four. Just a plastic cover guys, you don't need to go crazy over tightening it, but I always do one last check by hand just to make sure that they all have the same amount of tightness that I could feel by hand and you can't feel that with the impact gun. getting ready to fire this thing up here it run brand new spark plugs in it there you go guys brand new ngk spark plugs brand new oil we're gonna let the oil pressure come up we had where did that go there was a box 
of the little box of the K&N oil filter that was out there. Where'd you where'd you put it? The box of the oil filter. Oh, okay. Yeah, that has the um. They they include an oil change sticker on the back of this. Okay. So oh, you don't okay, want to cool. throw that away. You want to peel okay, that yeah. off. I got I got a glove on. Peel that off. You want to um, leave the cap off and let it run with the cap off and keep topping it off as it burps up. I mean, it's a little hard to peel off, ain't it? Well, I'm trying not to break it. If I pull it hard, it'll break in here. Is it good? Mm. I yeah, I think we'll just get a new one. Okay. Yeah, that, that might not stick. Yeah, throw it away. They should make that easier to peel off. Yeah, so now that we let it run for a minute, I want you to shut it off. Okay. And what we're going to do is, once he shuts, he, we wanted it to run so that the oil filter will fill up with oil, right? And then once the oil filter is done filling up with oil, then he'll shut it off, we'll let it settle, and then that'll tell us, um, that'll tell us how much oil we need to top off if we need to top off any hey what's the mileage in here the mileage is 38639 38639 so we're gonna set this oil change sticker today's date is november the 12th let me try to write over here Somewhere where y'all could see. And so today is, oh, this Sharpie is no good. That's your money maker. So today is the 29, 29, 29 November of the year 2020. <clears throat> and we used 5W30 AMS. Now uh, the oil was 38,679, right? So we're gonna set it for 5,000 miles. And so uh, 38 should be five uh, S S A E five W thirty. Yeah, yeah, it was five W thirty. I wrote that. And so at thirty eight, we'll do it for forty two. I'm just waiting to get a confirmation. It was, it was what was the last three digits on the miles? Six seven nine, if I remember correctly. Six three nine. Six three nine. So we'll set it for 42, 38, 639. And so on this sticker, it's the date that it was done on and the mileage that it's due to come back in on. So when it hits 42, 639, which won't take this guy long to do that, um, we'll look at the date that it was done and we'll gauge how many how much time it took from November 29th to get to 42,000 miles. And that way we get a feel for how often he's doing an oil change. And that nine's looking like an eight, but the Sharpie ain't doing the best job either. All right, so we'll let him put that up in his windshield. You gotta peel it off. That one peels off easy.
use the rag to rub it. All right, last thing we want to check is the oil level. Now that he ran it and we shut it off, we want to check the oil level. It's saying low coolant. Check the plug connected to your coolant overflow tank. You have a plug there. See if we can get this thing to stay. This is why I don't like working with tripods on cars. They're a pain in the butt. All right. You, you're gonna hold that for a second right there. And what we're looking for is where the oil level is. So the first time, don't worry about what it says. Just pull it out and wipe it to where it's clean the the minimum dot right here is your minimum mark and the top dot is your full dot where we want to be so i'm going to re-dip it and look at it and when i pull it out you never want to hold it down you always want to pull it out and hold it level so you see there's your minimum dot let me focus this camera there's your minimum dot there's your full dot and we're about halfway so we're about a half quart low to the full mark so we're gonna add another half a quart and he'll have a half a quart left over and then he should be good to go on his way to the house put this back in these oil caps are not fun to get off i'm gonna get some fire Yeah, so I usually put a rag just so I don't leave uh, teeth marks from mm -hmm. the pliers mm -hmm. and uh, and use the plier to crack it open like that. Make sure that's clean and we have port here. 5W30 like he said, AMS oil. We use AMS oil because AMS oil has not only the longer change interval, but it has the higher boiling point. So your quart is going to be starting off up top at the nine. And we're going to go down to about just the, the five, maybe a little bit below. And between the 16 and the five is where we want to be. The pretty yellow oil going in there. I've been doing this for a while so I get a feel for the weight of the jug in my hand and I can tell how much when to stop pouring because of the weight that I'm, I know what a half a quart weighs in my hand so that's on the money in between the 5 and the 16 if you haven't figured out the weight on the field pour a little check pour a little check you don't want to overfill it when you pull this guy out always hold it up let it drip a little bit and then pull it away fast. That way you don't get oil everywhere. I always like to wipe the seal down. You don't need to tighten that with the plier just because it took a plier to get it off. The reason why you need a plier to pull it off is because of the vacuum when the engine was started it sucked it down for a tighter seal it'll suck it down on its own so you don't need to worry all right so now if we check it again i'll do a rewipe just to give you a cleaner view of it you want to pull up straight and hold that level as quick as possible so right here we're right about the full mark the oil i just poured in hasn't settled all the way down by the time it does it'll be at that full mark so that's nice and clean fresh oil full to the full mark uh i'm not gonna bore everyone on the video with the last two things i have to do which is top off his uh coolant level and his windshield wash but um 
y'all get an idea for what it takes to do spark plugs on a Nissan. Sorry, I say Nissan because it's a Nissan, but this is the Infiniti Q50 2015 model. It's a 3.7. It would be the same for the 3.5 if you have a 350Z, a Nissan Altima, a Maxima. Nissan uses this engine on all those vehicles. Anyways, any questions, drop a comment below. God bless y'all. Stay safe. Bye. You know, the, uh, the new one is